No. After these 21 days fasting prayer, we have really seen many, many things happening. And um, anyone wants to come and share what things are? Is, uh, even I heard uh, good stories in uh, Nora's family too. <laughs> Breakthrough. You know, God really protected the daughters. This year is something really great, different from our other years. And so many new faces we saw, right? So many new, new, new faces. And uh, some of them are actually VBS. One day, really, I felt so burdened because there's so much we are sowing into them, but I don't want that to be wasted. And um, I don't know, always I feel every year we are doing it. But God, like, we want to see the fruit, right? We just doing it and just letting them go. And after a year, we don't know where they are, you know. We want to see the fruit of it. Then suddenly, I was feeling that we should start a club, like children club. At least once in a month, we should invite all of them to come. And so that we can do follow-up, we can have a, keep an eye on them, have a track where they are, what they are doing, are they on the right path or not. We want to help them in their challenges and help them, equip them to overcome the world when they are facing the world. I really have a burden for children of Canada, young people of Canada. We need to raise them up as a holy generation. You know, it's very easy to change children rather than changing adults. You know, it's very easy. The plant can bend easily than the tree bending. <laughs> very easy to shape them, tame them, and uh, make them obedient to Jesus. Adults already set up their mind, right? But, you know, some of them are, are very, very hard to change, some of the adults. But whereas children, you know, when, when there are a teacher asking, how many of you really want to come close to God? How many of you want to receive? Everybody's hand raised up. Not even a one child left away. You know, every single. That's what the children is ministry is really I love, I enjoy because they're very much open to God. And so um, uh, then I felt kingdom children we need to raise up. So kingdom children club. <laughs> That's what we thought, KCC, <laughs> you know, kingdom children club. So uh, that's the word I heard. And um, then we announced, and I was feeling so hesitant to announce it because I don't know God. I really needed confirmation. Is is this my my own mind, or is it really from you? I need to feel this is from you. See, uh, when this is from you, I feel anointing coming upon me, right? When I'm talking, also. So I I was looking for so so many people confirmed me. Yes, this is right. They're excited about it. So, okay, God, this something is right. So, I, so that day, I really felt, when I came here and uh, the last day I was talking about children club, kingdom children, I just felt the presence of God, just the anointing of God. I know this is from God. So, um, we are starting as a team. We are uh, like a team people, we a group of people with them, those who really have a heart for the children. And we want to start this club with them. And so once in a month, it means one Saturday in a month, we, we have taken their emails and phone numbers. We are going to invite them once in a month. Uh, and we are going to do a lot of activities. We will make it fun. It's not like a school type. We'll make it a lot of fun. Like in, at the same time, we will, we will give them the word too. The word, one-on-one -on -one counseling. And, uh, uh, and also a lot of fun activities, so they're, they're going to enjoy. Then, you know, children should feel going to other clubs, you know, nightclubs and all that. They should feel, ah, this club, I really want to go to this club. <laughs> children, kingdom children, kingdom. We want to raise up kingdom children, like a, a kingdom culture. We want to cultivate the kingdom culture into children. They will become kingdom families one day. Hallelujah. Right? So keep praying for this club, please. 
and I keep praying for all the uh, team members. And also, I really love and uh, want to appreciate every worker in this uh, VPS. My God, like I heard some people came to me outside of our church. They came to me and said, you know, sister, your people in your church are very humble people, very humble. And their attitudes are very different. So humble attitudes. Every one of them really worked from their heart for these children. I, I so good to hear that kind of, you know, word from other people. They notice something in these church members. I really, really like it and I appreciate all of you. And uh, teachers, please don't think that I'm not appreciating. Please, I'm appreciating you. I love you so much. I really exalt you today. I lift you up today. I'm telling every one teacher. I really love you. God is going to reward you. You know, Amen. what we given the gifts, these very small gifts. Please don't think that is your wages. No way. No way. It's so small gift. It's just appreciation we are given. But I'm telling you, in the kingdom of God, you have a great gift. Hallelujah. When you go there, you will find it. God is going to give you. God will reward you, each one of you. Even Nora. I'm telling not only teachers, every worker. And I've seen that they disciplined children so well. They were not noisy. They're so, my God, you know, Alita, you have such a gift in your class. I saw the children are so quiet and so open. They're so, you know, eager to learn. And I've seen this so well, the disciplined children. <laughs> Praise God for it. Hallelujah. Okay, then uh, let's go into the word. Again, God gave me a different word this morning. <laughs> I was preparing last Sunday. I wanted to share one thing, so I thought, okay, this Sunday I get to share that word. And I was preparing about the last Sunday, the, the previous one, what I wanted to, uh, that I was preparing this morning. God gave me all together a different message again. So let's invite the presence of God. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, Lord, I Lord, I invite your presence here, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, God, touch our hearts completely, Father. I, I pray that take away our own minds now. God, have your way. Give your mind, your thoughts, God, your words. God, have your way, Holy Spirit, God. Complete control in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, um, it's about relationship with God. You know, actually how faith comes? Faith is really based on the relationship what you have with your God. Faith comes with the relationship. You know, Jesus was saying that when you come to the Father, when you ask Father, Father, I want bread, will he give you stone? Why he was giving that example? Because do you understand the relationship, father and son relationship you have? Even the wicked parents, even the wicked, wicked, like people may be bad, but when it comes to their children, they always want to give to their children. Even they might do injustice to other people, but when it comes to their children, they will never do injustice to their children because that's what the heart of the father, right? So that's why Jesus given this example. Ask, it will be given. Matthew chapter 7, verse 7 to 10. Seek, you will find. Knock, it will be opened. And he's telling, beautifully giving that example. What father will give a stone when child asks for bread? No father will give. I really want you to have that closeness, 
that relationship with God, that's how your faith is based on. You will have confidence in God. Whatever I ask, I get it. Because he's my father. He's my father. I'm his dearest son. <laughs> I know he loves me so much. If I ask, he will give me. That relationship, everyone must have. You know, uh, the really how that relationship will come is that one thing he said, you know, abide in my love, abide in me, then ask whatever you ask, it will be given to you. If you abide in my love, you live in the love of God, you know, like a, you, he was saying actually, you know, love one another, he was saying about that, he said, abide in my love, you love one another. If you love one another, you will abide in my love. That's what he was saying. If you love one another, then ask. Whatever you ask, it will be given to you. When you really live a life of love, like loving everybody in your heart, from your heart, your prayers are fruitful. Your prayers are answered. And you will have that faith in God. You will have that confidence in God. Another scripture I'll tell you to have confidence in God is, you know, uh, 1 John chapter 3 verse 21. 1 John chapter 3 verse 21. It's not working? This one. 1 John chapter 3 verse 21. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence toward God. If that is, that is what it is, I always check with that. You know, if if a heart is not like a, in peace with God, if a heart is not in rebellion with God, if a heart is not like in, in war with God, you know, like if a heart is yielded to God in everything. You have confidence before God. Whatever you ask, we will get it. That's the, we need to keep our hearts clean, conscious, clean before God. How? Like, you know, like if, if you have a rebel, like, you know, you know in your heart you are not disobeying, you are disobeying God. You know in your heart something I'm not doing right. You know, something... God wants me to do thing. I'm I'm not doing it, or I'm not able to do it. Whatever, that heart is just kind of condemning you. You know, self condemnation. Then you don't have confidence when you go to God that my prayers are going to be answered because you have to deal with that condemnation first. Why your hearts are condemning? What area? What what is that? Go 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 deeper. You dig into that condemnation and look where you've fallen, where you failed God, what area, because you're not going to get faith otherwise. If you don't deal with that condemnation, you won't have confidence, you won't have faith in God that I'm going to get it. That's very shaky place I'm telling you, very shaky standard is, you know, I'm praying, praying, but I'm not sure whether I'm going to get it or not. That is very shaky. You should never, you should never come into that shaky place. You should always, because you're a daughter, you're a son, to the most high God, he's your father. You need to have confidence before God. I pray, I ask, God is going to give me. Not only that, this is the will of God. This is God's will. That, that's the confidence. You know, you make sure. Whatever I'm asking, that's exactly God wants me to have it. That's his heart for me to have it. Then you have confidence before God when you're asking. Right? Just check with that. That area. So I'm just going to go into the relationship with God now. You know, one thing I just want to help you to have 
better relationship, that closeness with God is having a desire to be ruled by God. I don't want to be myself. I don't want to be independent life. I just want to be under God, under His rule, under His authority. If you really have that desire, desire, the passion, I'm sure God will become very close to you. Very. He will come to you. He'll become very close, very close friend of you. Those who have the desire to be with God, what they're going to do? They are going to seek. That's what it says. Seek, you will find me. God is saying, those who seek from their whole heart, they will find me. God said, if you seek from your heart, they will find God. God will come to them. God reveals himself to them. Those who really love God, those who want God, those who are searching for him, seeking him, God will never keep himself away from them. God will come to them. If you want to have a relationship with God, closeness with God, then you've got to seek Him. You've got to love Him. You've got to go after Him. You know, I'll tell you one thing. The pro prodigal son story, you know. Actually, what's the... the we think prodigal son story is only connected to the people oh, who lost, who are perishing, who are in sin, sinful life. We think that is connected to them. I don't think so. I don't think so. Prodigal story, son story is connected to everybody who really wants to live independent life. Actually, people who wants to live independent life, they're all prodigals. They're all prodigals only. You know, what is this prodigal son story? Because once you are a prodigal, you might you have a capacity to sin at any extent once you are a prodigal. What is the Once you left your father, once you left your father, you are able to commit any kind of sin. You have that ability, that potential to commit any kind of sin, any kind of, any extent people can go once we are prodigals. What is prodigal? Leaving father's roof. That's what that prodigal son did that. What he, one day he decided, I just want to live by myself. People think that is not a sin, they think. Just living by themselves is not a sin. But that is actually a door opening for every sin. That son, don't think that son really have intention to commit sin or not bad. No. Only one desire he had is want to live by himself. That was the only desire. In the beginning he had. Individuality, beloved. Living an independent life and having individuality is not at all right. Is not at all right. You know, um, that's what happened in that story. He, he, that's the reason he asked money from the father. Why? Because I'm no longer be with you anymore. Just, just give me my portion. Give me my money. I live by myself. I live by myself. That's what he took the money and gone. And then that's it. What happened? You know the story. What all happened later on? You know that story. Then, then he come back to senses one day. And then he realized, oh, I wish I would be in my father's house. When, when, you know, in my father's house, they have everything. Even servants have everything. Look at me. I don't have anything. I'm starving. I'm eating a food like a pig's food. 
I have to eat now. Even that is also not available now. I have come to this stage. But whereas my father's house, my the servants have food. He came back to senses. And then he realized, let me go back to my father. So what he was doing is, he was giving up his independent life. Enough is enough. I'm tired of living alone. You know, I'm telling you that. Everyone who do not want to live under father, they're like orphans. They're like an orphans who give up their father and living independent life. We think that we are doing good, but we are actually orphans. Living independent life is an orphan life. Then he realized, and then when he came back, you know, I, I want to just go back to my father and just because I'm, I'm not worthy to be his son again because I, I rejected him. I left him once, you know, I, I betrayed him, but I'm not worthy to go back again and ask. That's why he was thinking, at least, father, at least a servant position in your house. Give me. He wanted to ask that. And he came back. When he came back to father, he was coming back to be ruled by his father. Beloved, that's what you have to realize. He gave up his independent life. He made up his mind to be under his father. To be ruled by, you know, what is that to be ruled by father? Is that like this? Everything, anything he does, he has to do the will of the Father. That's what it is. Giving up your independent life, being under your Father means not your will anymore, your Father's will. Amen. So he made up that decision, enough is enough, I'm not going to do my way anymore. God, I just, I just want, Father, I just want to do, I want to serve you, I want to serve your heart, I just want to do your will now. That's what happened. When he made up his mind and coming back, what happened? Father ran. He looked at him from far. And father ran to him. You know what the word says? He fell on his neck and kissed him. He was just kissing him, kissing him. Father was missing him so much. The son, that much love available to son from the father, was kissing him and taking, was not asking him anything. Oh, why did you do that? What did you do that? Why all this? See, what, what happened? Did you learn your lesson now? <laughs> like many of us, we do that. Did you learn your lesson now? <laughs> Nothing like that. He was actually compassionate. Oh, my son, how much is suffering? He was so compassionate. And he started kissing him, took him into his arms and said, called his servant and said, get a best robe for my son. He was lost. Now when he was found. Get a best robe. It means he's a son again here. He was telling, Father, I want to be your servant. He was not listening about that. Father decided, no, he's a son. He's a son again. He's a son again. That's where the best robe again. All that. You know, why father went to him and kissed him and showed him so much affection and did everything for him. Why? Because the choice what the son made I'm telling you, beloved, today, if you make the choice, God, I want to be ruled by you. I just want to do your will. God will come to you. And he just shows, bestow his so much love upon you. And he's not far from you. He will be very close to you. He revealed his love to you. This is what, to have relationship with God, everyone must make this kind of decision. Then you will start having intimacy, 
relationship. This is the beginning for the relationship is that, God, I just want to do your will. I want to be obedient to you. I don't want to live by myself anymore. Yes? Okay, then, um, no plan A, no plan B. For faith, right? You know, like, you know, it's like, we should be like this. Oh, faith should be like that. God, if you have relationship with God, you will understand. This is the kind of faith you will have, you know. God, if you, if you don't do it, I'm done. That's it. I don't want, I don't want to have a plan A. I don't want to have a plan B, no way. God, if you're not doing this project, I don't want that project anymore. If you're not going with me, I don't want to go anymore. <laughs> I don't want to do anything. If I'm doing something, if you're not, that's what I felt in the kids club. If God do not want that, I don't want that club. If God is not in that, I don't, I have no interest. Like that. No plan A, no plan B, no. People have all alternative plans. Oh, I'm, I'm going to pray. I'm going to ask God. If God do not give this, okay, I'll keep another plan now. No, no. If God is not doing that, God won't be there. So what's the point of having the whole world if God is not with you? Do you want that? If God is not with you, why do you want to do that? If God is not answering you, your prayer, don't do that. Don't do that. Stop it. No plan A, no plan B. I don't want that, God. If you don't want to give, I don't want it. Okay? You know, uh, that's why I, I, I know Moses, why Moses said that. Why Moses said that? No. God, if you don't come, don't send me. Yeah. If you're not going with me, don't send me. I know why God, Moses really, really, you know, I, I've been thinking and studying about Moses' life. And, uh, oh my God, it's such a relationship Moses had, that closeness with God. I really got into that, admire that relationship that Moses had. Why he said that word? Because, you know, he, he, to say that word, there was a past history there. There's a background there. It's not something, you know, you can't say these words like that. You cannot say, it's, it's very strong words those are. Not just because I one day I enjoyed the presence of God. So the next day, oh God, I want, I want, I need you. Because if you don't come, I don't know. It won't happen that way. There's a past. There's something happened between God and Moses. There's something. There was a relationship built between them. That was the reason Moses said that day, God, if you don't go with me, don't send me. Let's see that. What was that past he had? Okay. And then, um, when that, you know, when Moses, Moses, um, Moses was having, like, that, when he saw the people uh, of his own people was in bondage, in slavery, in Egypt, he was... He was so hurt, you know that, right? He, he wanted to deliver them and he went out and he did that, he killed, you know that story. But I was thinking like, you know, how come he had that passion to deliver his people? Like, because he, he realized that was the call upon his life. He knew that, that was his calling. And he, he, he wanted to be a deliverer 
and he knew that that's the heart of god he received today you know why we feel so like burden to pray for people why we we have burden for the souls that that's the burden that's that's the responsibility i don't know how we get it i don't know how we get it this this is serving the heart of god you know that is god's heart you want to serve that heart you want to serve that heart i don't know how to get this i tried my best like for people to get it to get that heart to serve the heart of god when i when i like when i was saved when i was saved i know that this grace of god that i'm just saved by the grace god just saved me i i felt the love of god and the minute, next moment next minute i know i have to obey god i have to live a selfless life from now on i have to love others i have to obey i know that is the, i don't know how i came to know that's just god's heart no i have because i received love from god i need to love now i need to love people now the very first thing i got is just pray for others i never used to pray for myself i was just praying for people i was praying for the lost that's just the, that is the heart of god just serve the heart of god moses was doing that most when you start doing it god started giving you heart his heart more more of his heart maybe a little bit in the beginning but you as you start doing this he is going to pour out his love his heart his compassion at heart more and more you start getting more and more pain burden responsibility day by day for the people i understand that moses was having such a great responsibility for his people he felt that's my responsibility i need to deliver my people from this cruel bondage injustice happening he could not take that injustice he showed his anger in that act he killed you understand the anger you understand the fire inside of him towards that injustice happening you just saw you know okay he killed that but you know what's behind his killing that shows his fire burning inside he was burning inside towards injustice happening to his people as a result he did that and then he knew when he when he has to help his fellow people will met his children of israel he knew it is going to cost is going to cost him giving up his palace he knew that he had to give up his position as a king king's princess he had to give up his riches reputation as a king what 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 reputation you hold authority what you hold there and riches comforts it is going to cost him everything he knew that the moment when he went stepped out and started helping his people do you think that pharaoh will agree that he knew one day he had to give up but still he did it anyway why fire burning inside of his heart towards injustice happening to his people that's what i'm saying he said heart of god that's the heart of god that's why hebrew says he he gave up his palace for the sake of his people and then after after that you know he was afraid of pharaoh and he ran away from egypt he went to that uh, you know midian and then 
and there God put him as like a shepherd. You know, oh now you need to learn how to be a shepherd. How to be a shepherd? Maybe forty years he was taking care of the sheep because God is teaching him to be a shepherd. One day, because God has a big plan. One day, you're going to lead my people. You will become a shepherd to my people. So better learn how to be a shepherd now. He was just with the sheep. He was with the sheep. Now you understand the Exodus chapter three, verse one to four. Exodus chapter three, verse one to four. Mountain of God, Horeb. Exodus chapter three, verse one to four. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of a bush. So he looked, and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the bush was not consumed. The Moses said. I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. So, when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, "Moses, Moses," and he said, "Here I am." You know, God encountered him on that mountain, Horeb. You know. God encounters people in many ways, in many different ways. But for Moses, he encountered him through this way. Through that is a something very unique and very different kind of encounters. Usually, people have encounters, right? I also had many times encounters. God's love encounter sometimes. God's correction I encounter sometimes. Different kinds of, you know. Different kinds of encounters people have. People hear the voice of God. People hear the see the visions of God. Great light, bright light, different. But Moses, this is the kind of encounter God has chosen for Moses. Why? Do you understand why God chosen this kind of encounter for Moses? That's who Moses was, because that's the personality of Moses. What's the personality of Moses? His heart was burning. Even though he left Egypt and gone away in that Midian, do you think that he forgot? He might be asking many questions to God. God, why did you allow this injustice? Why you are not looking down? How you are not doing justice to my people? He might have lots of questions inside of his heart, burning to ask God about it. He was not happy. He was not. He was not peaceful about it. So you understand. Even he left Egypt. You think the burden did not leave him? The burden did not leave him. He was searching God. He was seeking God. And not only that, you know, people just get depressed, right? So many years. What is that? When you see some negative things happening all around, people get depressed, and you just give in to that, compromise, and give in. Ah, who, who wants? Who will bother? Just leave it. No, forty years over. He was still looking for answers. His heart was still burning. He never given up on that mission. He wants to deliver his people. He was not depressed. He was still looking for answers because he know there is a God. He know there is a God. He believes in God. He knows that he will do justice. But why these things are happening? And also Moses had that inquisitive, you know, why he's just see. But when the Lord saw that he turned aside to look, you know, 
Moses will never give up. I know. Oh, there's something is burning. He saw that. He wants to come and see, check it out. Why it is burning? Why it is not burnt? It just is not consuming. Fire is there, but it, why it is not consuming? See, that kind of uh, inquisit, that kind of that inside was in him. Why? I, I want you to know he's not a depressed man. He not settle with it. His heart is still looking for answers. That's the reason when that something is happening on the mountain, he wants to know what it is. He wants to go closer to that. He wants to check it out what it is. That's why God gave him that kind of encounter. God knows him very well. He's going to come close. That's why he says, when the Lord saw that, the, that he turned aside to look, God called to him from the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. He said, here I am. Then afterwards he says something. Okay, let's see. Um, from 4 to 12, please. Exodus chapter 3 from verse 4 to 12. Then he said, do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet. For the place where you stand is holy ground. <laughs> you know, um, you know, if, when God said that, you know, take off your sandals. If you really care more, like, you know, if you really want to more, go more closer to God, what you're going to do? Yes, I'll take your sandals and go. If you think, oh, it's okay, I'll leave here, then you, you stay there because I don't want to go closer. If I want to go closer, then I have to remove my sandals, right? If I'm not going closer, I don't need to remove my sandals. I just stay there, right? Say that. Remove your sandals. Where you're play, the standing. He, he wants to be there. He wants to be in the presence. He wants to be there. Check it out. Just settle with it. What it is, what it is, what God wants to do. What I have to do? I have to hear. I have to listen to him. I, I'm not going, I'm not going. I came here, I have to listen, see what it is, and then I'm going. Okay, if it is costing my sandals, okay, I remove my sandals and go. But I'm not going. Beloved, that is the personality, that is the attitude God is asking you. You want closeness with God? Do you want that intimacy with God? That relationship with God? Are you willing to go any, any extent in your walk with God? Are you willing to give up your sandals now? Are you willing to clean up your feet now? Just to get into the presence of God? In the New Testament, Peter, when Jesus washing the feet of the Peter, Peter said, no, 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 Master, don't, don't touch my feet. What Jesus said, if I don't, you have no part with me. Where is it? John 13 verse 8 and 9. John chapter 13 verse 8 and 9. When Jesus said that, you know, Peter said to him, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus answered him, if I do not wash you, you have no part with me. Then Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. Why he said that, oh God, I can't. I need to have you now. If you say you have no part with God, wash me everything, wash me everything. You know why Jesus took only Peter, James, John on the mountain and transfigured? Why not other disciples? Something in these three. Why? God has no partiality. Why? He's chosen these three disciples. Took them onto the mountain top. He showed his glory to them. Transfigured. These people have a desire. To be with him. 
is nothing about you know it's not that i'm holy because you are holy or righteous that's why god loves you it's nothing about that you cannot be holy without god you cannot be righteous without god what god is looking from you is that your desire your desire your willingness your heart do you want god god is not away from you god is not far from you do you love him god is so close to you god will come to you do you love him do you love to have relationship with him peter said that wash me but i really want to have part with you i want to be with you Yes, Moses did that. And then God spoke to Moses after that. He said that great responsibility. Do you think that just God just randomly called somebody and given great rest? God saw his heart. God had seen the burning in the Moses heart. Such a passion. That's why God trusted him. Why God trusted Moses? when he is giving some work to you unless you are trusted no one will give you that work if someone is giving you a great work means be you are very trustworthy god trusted moses because he saw he gave a palace for this cause and he heart is still searching for answers burning for his people that's why god given a great commission a great responsibility upon moses shoulder you will lead my people you will lead my people into the promised land and he was was thinking oh who am i god who am i because he was thinking he did not have any idea you know when he was talking he was telling uh, moses you know i am the god of abraham i am the god of isaac and jacob why he said that why he said that word you know why till that time even moses had no relationship with god do you understand moses relationship with god is like a far far like he was considering god like a god of my father god of abraham god of isaac god of jacob so you know that kind of relationship moses had but when he really became his god after he took that responsibility that's why when he was telling this great commission also you know what god was telling him like that okay where is that? Yes. Ja a Exodus 3. Yes, when he was first talking to him. Exodus 3. Okay, from verse 1 to 4 again. Not not 1 to 4, 4 to 12. no hmm 6 was 6 put was 6 yes moreover he said i am the god of your father the god of abraham the god of isaac and the god of jacob and moses hid his face <laughs> for he was afraid to look upon god Do you see that his his relationship with god was not there as later on he was not at all afraid no when to see he on the glory on the mountain top he went and the all that he saw he was not at all afraid but that time he hit his face he was afraid to look upon god because he was not having a closeness but you must understand closeness came later closeness came later you know after he took the responsibility of people the people 
Then he got the closeness with God. But before that, he was serving the heart. That heart was there. That heart was there. I'm telling you today, really, do you want to hear God so close and have relationship? You better really serve his heart. You have to take up his heart, his responsibilities. That's how you become very close to God. God become close to him afterwards. That's why he was telling I'm God of that. Later on, you know, he became, no, this is God. And how close he became close to God is, you know, like a, um, he was saying that, you know, uh, when <clears throat> Mount Sinai experience, you know that, right? Mount Sinai experience, Exodus chapter 19, verse 25. If, if you see this, oh my God, this, such an um, experience here, 1 to 25. If you see the difference between people, other people, relationship with God, whereas Moses relationship with God. So, so distance, you know, you, that's how today, you know, for some people, God is so close. For some people, God is very far. But still, God is hearing their prayer also. <laughs> I'm not saying that God won't hear their prayers because these people, children of Israel, they were, they were crying. They were, I want this, I want that. God is hearing. Don't think that God, even they were groaning. That's why God heard that cry and came down, right? They're groaning because of the pain. Don't, it's just because God is hearing your prayers means it's not that you have closeness with God. Closeness is something else. Yes, you, you ask God with faith, you get something, you get some answers, but don't be satisfied with that. You need to have a relationship with God, closeness with God. See, that's what he said here. Um, um, yes. Where is it? Did I say Exodus? Nineteen. Exodus nineteen from verse one to twenty-five. In the third month after the children of Israel had gone out of the land of Egypt, on the same day they came to wilderness of Sinai, but they had departed from Rephidim. Okay. More. Next, please. Went up to God, and the Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians. Okay, next, please. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me. Okay, next, please. Moses came, called for the elders of the people, laid before them all these words, Lord command. Then all the people answered. Next, please. The Lord said to Moses, Behold, I come to you in the thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with you and believe you forever. So Moses told the words of the people to the Lord. Then the Lord said to Moses, Go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes and let them be ready for the third day. For on the third day, the Lord will come down upon Mount Sinai in the sight of all people. You shall set bounds for the people all around, saying, Take heed to yourself that you do not go to the mountain or touch its base. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. Not a hand shall touch him, but he shall surely be stoned or shot with an arrow. With a man or beast, he shall not live. When the trumpet sounds long, they shall come near the mountain. So Moses went down from the mountain to the people, sanctified people, and they washed their clothes. You know, he was telling Moses, Moses, you come, you know, when the thunder comes, that all the trumpets out and the lightning and the pitch sound and all that uh, happening, you know, you know, God always talked to Moses, but that day God wanted to manifest, God wanted to manifest himself on that mountain, Mount Sinai, like a physical manifestation, you know. Sometimes that's what God always speaks to us, God speaks to us, but sometimes God wants to manifest himself. That's what it's called glory. Glory means he decided to manifest himself. So when he wanted to manifest on that Mount Sinai, 
he was telling you know let people do not let them not come near the mountain but you come you come upon the mountain and he never told moses you consecrate yourself you wash yourself you need to do you prepare yourself nothing like that you don't find anything telling moses but he was telling moses you prepare people consecrate them wash them wash their clothes this is all for what just to come near the mountain only is not even coming up the mountain this whole preparation is just to go near the mountain and also he was telling don't touch the mountain also they're not allowed to touch the mountain you know when you have closeness with god relationship with god you are clean <laughs> you are clean like moses doesn't need to do anything all these things the relationship what you, you know you need to know like today we so many of us like we just play near the mountain but we don't we don't go on to the mountain <laughs> we just play near the mountain mountain is there but you know that there is available for every believer it is available for you to go into the mighty presence of god mountain represents something closeness with god enter into that relationship with god we don't want to enter we just want to play near the mountain moses went on to the mountain top and god you want to see the glory you would have to be on that you have to be on the mountain top he manifested himself on the mountain top he chose to manifest himself on the mountain you want to have relationship with god just go go more go more closer go seek him seek him go on to the mountain take the responsibilities of lost souls love them love them give yourself to them those people those you people you know they only they were seeking god but but different reasons they want just god to deliver them they were just want god to bless them want god to protect them want god to provide them all those people relationship is only limited to that that's why they were not able to go on to the mountain they just stayed at the mountain foot of the mountain away from the mountain not touching the mountain no 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 i just don't want to go into the presence too much too much of glory i don't want that that too much that too closeness no no i just just be by myself like that you know whenever i need it like god can bless me i just pray and then god will bless me you know like that when moses gone up to the mountain top different relationship different relationship you know like when jesus was there and this that so many people crowded around him and followed him you know many people believed when he was doing miracle signs many people believed in him you know and but still the word of god says he did not commit himself to everybody john chapter 2 was 23 24 25 he did not commit himself to everybody he said why because he sees our heart he sees our heart your heart is only god i just want to do this for me i want you to only that he, he he wants to see do you love him do you want him do you need him do you want to come close to him you have that desire he knows your heart that's why see he did many signs and wonders many people believed after that this word says now when he was jerusalem at the passover many believed in his name when they saw the signs which he did 
but Jesus did not commit himself to them because he knew all men and had no need that anyone should testify of man for he knew what was in man why he did not commit himself he did not committing himself means he did not give himself to them he did not reveal himself to them he did not show himself his glory to them his presence to them yes he was touching people yes he was healing people yes he was meeting every need but he did not commit himself Hallelujah. Yes. Do you love God? Do you want God? More than anything you want him? You know that's why God said about Moses Moses was a very humble man. That's why God, why God talked to him very clearly face to face as a friend he was talking. Many of us we see visions, we see dreams, but whereas Moses now face to face like a friend Numbers chapter 12 verse 3 he says that he says that why he chose to be like that with Moses because Moses has that heart for God Moses heart is not about anything God I want you I want you God I want you if you don't not with me I don't go anywhere God I want you I need you 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 in my life the man moses was very humble more than all men who were on the face of the sudden lord said to him come out more after that because i speak to him he was telling them the lord came down in the pillar of cloud and stood in the door of the table and called there and miriam and they both went for me he said if there is a prophet among you i the lord make myself known to him in a vision i speak to him in a dream but not so with my servant moses he is faithful in all my house i speak with him face to face even plainly and not in dark sayings and he sees the form of the lord after moses he chose and joshua do you know why there so many children of israel why he picked joshua after moses every time when moses goes and just talk to god in the tabernacle joshua will never leave that place behind moses he was just standing there and just looking at moses wow what a i wish i should have that i wish i should have that relationship with god he was hungry for inside of his heart oh, i want to go into the presence i want to be in the presence of god i want to see the glory god was watching joshua's heart when this whole thing was happening with moses god was watching joshua's heart what was happening in hunger he developed hunger in joshua as soon as moses time has come he spoke i have chosen joshua I have chosen Joshua now to lead my people. God is watching all of our hearts today. Are you hungry for the presence of God? Even I am preaching today. If this is bringing hunger in your heart, God is watching your heart. If you are hungry for his presence, for the glory of God, he is going to come to you. is going to reveal himself to you he is not far from you
Hallelujah. You know, the finally, you know, the, the, he says, in the Bible it says, you know, the, when he finished the tabernacle, Moses finished the tabernacle, then it says, the glory of the Lord came upon the tabernacle. And the Moses even could not enter into that. There's a thick cloud over the tabernacle. When it came, after he finished the whole construction of tabernacle, then the glory came. That really struck me today. God, tabernacle is today, you and I is tabernacle. Church is his tabernacle. Church means body of Christ. If every one of us, God given instructions to Moses, do this, do this, every measurement, every detail, he had to follow everything as the Lord said, he did everything. Not just even one thing here and there. Exactly the pattern what God said. He built the tabernacle exact. Then the glory of God came. God is telling me today, this church, every person in this church, if you can find your spot in the body of Christ, you be, don't go here and there. One step here and there. Be in your place. Find your position in the body. Be in your place. You know, don't, don't ever compare with anyone. Oh, I want to do their job. Don't do that. Don't ever try to do somebody's job. You have no grace for it. That's not the will of God. You be in your position. Find your spot. Find your spot in the body of Christ. How do you find? God's given spot. If you are led by God to come to this church, it means you have a spot in this church. If God led you to be in this church, it means God allotted a position for you in this church, in this body of Christ. You know, don't ever think that the feet might think that, oh, I'm very low, I'm very low. Don't ever think that. I don't like this, this leg to be over me, bossing over me. I want to be connected directly to the head because head is the Jesus. I don't want to be there, the low position, and I don't want the leg to dominate me. I want to be here being, sir. God won't allow that. And that is not the will of God. You don't see any glory of God coming upon. You know, feet, you must enjoy your job. Feet, you, you need to feel this way. How awesome is this position? How, what a privilege. You know, I'm taking the whole body. Feet are taking you, right? Feet, I'm taking to the places, the whole body. I'm carrying the whole body. I'm carrying Jesus into places. Such a privilege for me to carry Jesus into places. Don't think that way. Enjoy the work, whatever God has given you. Enjoy the work. If it is a, not a big public work, you know, some people give in a public, like, you know, like a, people will all look at the work because it is, it is some people given that kind. You know, for me, I'm preaching publicly, like everybody's looking at me. Don't think this is only ministry. Don't ever think this is the ministry. Some people jobs are hidden. But that's, that's something greatness. Enjoy. Every job, enjoy. We should enjoy. Some jobs are public. Some jobs are hidden. But God is watching. You are so awesome. And if your reward comes from heaven, it's so great. If we receive reward here, it's not that God rewards, it's great. It's great reward. Our reward is, oh girl, she's great, she's great. That is only nothing more we get. In people's eyes, you become great. Oh, wow, wow, wow. That's it. Nothing more. God gives reward. <laughs> great. It's great. Let's stand. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.